Everything I read coming into the show told me that the, the order flow here was going to be pretty anemic, that we weren't going to see much coming through. You sat down and you said to me, yeah, I think we're going to see a few surprises here. Yeah. Do, do you think that the financial community, do you think the analysts are underestimating the potential of A, what we're going to see here, and B, what the industry and you can deliver? Yeah, I think there's a little upside here this week. We're continuing to see strong energy in the marketplace. You know, we've got a seven and a half trillion dollar market over the next 10 years. The orders flow in commercial airplanes remain steady. We're expecting a book to bill again this year of about one. Right. And uh, we've got about 5,700 commercial airplanes in backlog, about seven years of production backlog. So that long-term backlog really gives uh, strength to the marketplace, strength to our operations. And, and you sense that this show is going to deliver more as well? Yeah, I think so. We've seen a lot of uh, narrow body interest. So, of course, uh, this week we'll be highlighting the MAX family. Yep. We've got the 737 MAX 9 flying. Uh, we expect to have some uh, news about the MAX 10 as well <laughs> later today. Yeah. And uh, also we're seeing some good incremental uh, wide body opportunities, 787s and 777s. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the MAXs for a moment. As you say, 8's in operation, you've got the 9 here. We're, we're waiting for the bell to be rung on the, uh, the arrival of the, uh, of the 10, which is the news that you're going to deliver for us, we think, a little bit later on. The question surrounding the 10 is, and we talked to a lot of your customers, they wanted the 10 for a while. So here's the question. Why has it taken you so long to respond to an A321neo that has been flying out of the door? I, could you have had this earlier? Now, we actually think the timing is just right. If you look at the heart of the market for narrow bodies, the MAX 8 and MAX 9 continue to be in the heart of the market. We get about 4,000 737s in backlog. Right. And because of that, we're ramping up from 42 a month production rate right now to 57 a month in 2019. The MAX 10 is going to add to that. We think the timing is just right. But even against this current production profile ramp up, we're oversold. So I think the timing in the marketplace is good. We'll have the MAX 10 uh, available to get into the marketplace around 2020, and we think that's going to add long-term value for our customers. Do you, do you think people will flip from the 9 to the 10? I imagine the engineering challenge around that's not, not particularly difficult. Do you think it may end up cannibalizing some of the 9? No, we'll, we'll likely have some conversions, as is normal. We'll yeah. have uh, some incremental uh, orders as well, and you'll see it adding to the family. The key is we have a family approach to how we design airplanes. And when our customers can operate across the MAX 7, 8, 9, and 10, that adds value for their operations. Let's talk about another, another aircraft. Um, I think Steve Harsey's called it the, the 797. Um, I've heard 7M7. I think you call it the NMA. I've heard MUM, yeah. middle of market. Yeah. This is the kind of 67, 767 replacement aircraft. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are talking about it. When do you think you, you guys are going to have board sign off on, on that? Yeah, well, we're going to talk some more this week about the market interest. So right now we're in the phase of evaluating the market, talking to our customers. We've talked literally to dozens of customers to gauge their interest in this middle of the market space. Uh, we see a need for an airplane that's larger than the 757 in terms of passenger count and yeah. longer range. Probably about a, a 5,000 nautical mile kind of airplane, 250 passenger seats, a uh, rough order of magnitude. Twin aisle? Uh, potentially a twin aisle solution. We're looking at different options right. for how we'd satisfy it. Really important that right now we focus on uh, knowing what our customers are looking for, evaluating the market, making the business case work. Uh, but we see a potential market there for about 4,000 aircraft. So we're going to do our due diligence. Uh, we have time to make the right decision. Uh, yep. this, if we do this airplane, it will be 2024, 2025 entry into service. So we have time to do it right. And, and if we were to do this development program, would be on the back side of 777X, so it would feather in nicely to our R&D plans. Let's talk politics. Um, Qatar, first of all, I, the, the president has sided on the Saudi side of uh, the fence. We're three weeks into this. Clearly, Qatar Airways is having to make some really significant mm. changes. Um, do you think that there is the potential for cancellations, deferrals? We're going to talk to Mr. Al-Bakr a little bit later on. I, how closely are you monitoring that, and, and could it be a problem? Well, we're keeping a very close eye on the situation. Obviously, the relationship between the United States and Qatar is very important. More broadly, the Middle East region, where we have a number of customers on both the defense and the commercial side. Uh, our customers at uh, Qatar Airways are extremely important to us. We do have significant backlog there. Yep. But we're, uh, we're seeing st some uh, stability there. And we think in the long run uh, that relationship will be worked out. I think you know, a very good signpost last week with the U.S. government signing the deal for F-15s with Qatar just gives you a sense that at the foundation level, the relationship is strong. There's some issues to work through, but we're, uh, we're very hopeful that the country-to-country -country relationship will uh, remain solid, and we know we have an important role to play in that. We're going to continue to serve our customers on both the commercial and defense side. Um, the, the, the president, you, you have 
been quite close to the president, and I'm, so I'm curious to get your take on this. Are we going to get deregulation? Are we going to get tax reform? All of the things that U.S. business is clamoring for at the moment, but but so far we haven't seen really very much of it. What I kind of what feedback are you getting? Well, we're seeing progress. I would say on uh, regulations and uh, and taking out regulations, simplifying processes. We're already seeing real tangible progress there. I think the great thing is with President Trump and the administration, business has a seat at the table. Yeah. Uh, we have an open dialogue. We're engaged, and on topics like trade policy, tax reform, regulatory reform. Still a lot of work to, do, to go, yep. and uh, we're hopeful that tax reform will happen. But uh, I'm seeing progress there, and I think in particular on the regulatory front, we're already seeing real, tangible progress that's helping to make our business more efficient.